Hello guys, today I want to show you a MacBook 6.1. This is a MacBook from 2009 and this is the last MacBook that Apple released in plastic. Every MacBook after this one was released in uh, aluminium, in aluminium body. So this is the MacBook 6.1. It looks a little bit different than other plastic MacBooks. Before that, they released them in white and black, and that model only came in white. I got it secondhand. It's an obsolete computer. You don't really want to use it anymore, uh, but it's still in a great condition. And obviously, if you are interested in collecting retro machines, it's a great device to have. It has some scratches on it, so you can discern some of the scratches under the light here, but otherwise, it looks fantastic and it still works fully. The hinges work, the keyboard work, uh, all is good. Uh, on the other opposite side, you see some dirt on the rubber, but it can be probably easily cleaned up. Other than that, it still works. Um, everything works, hinges work, uh, keyboard work. As you can see, the screen work. It runs macOS Catalina, and it's an unofficial Mac OS on this hardware. You cannot normally install it uh, on this machine. You can install it if you use a certain thing called DOS Dude, and uh, I'll put a link in the description there. Um, other than that, it works fine. So if you just want to browse the web, it works perfectly. Uh, Safari works. Um, other browsers work as well. They're a little bit slow, especially with dependency on the JavaScript. But other than that, for typing and casual experience, it's still, uh, it's still great. You do want to be careful to use it for sensitive things because it does not have the latest security updates. So even if you're on Catalina, you will not have a full bulletproof system. What we are going to do uh, with this one, uh, we are going to upgrade its RAM. It came with four gigabytes of RAM. Uh, it also has a hard drive, an HDD, and we are going to put in a solid disk drive inside. And the donor for our plastic MacBook would be the previous generation. So previous generation of this plastic MacBook, um, the aluminum unibody 5.1. It's almost similar in the specs, um, but there are some differences. So of course, obviously the aluminum case, and this is a plastic one, um, but also I can show you right here. So there is a hatch that reveals a battery, and this is the SDD that we're going to put in the plastic MacBook. And inside there, there are eight gigabytes of RAM, which we will also donate to the plastic MacBook. But first, we're going to clean uh, uh, the plastic first. So thankfully, due to rubber back, it cleans very well, especially if you use like isopropyl uh, uh, tissues. I don't think it can be cleaned that much um, easier by hand. I think the only way you can do is to take it off and uh, use soap to clean it up. But I think for now, uh, it's fine. I think it's great. So what we're going to do now, we're going to unscrew a MacBook. We're going to take it off and um, start to transfer the insides from one MacBook to another and see if it works um, after we're done with it. And here we have it. So we are going to open it um, and see what we have inside. Some technical difficulties. Yeah. So here we have it. We have our hard drive, our battery, as you can see, and the RAM. 
so the RAM and the hard drive we're going to take out and replace with a new one from the donor computer. And here it is, our donor computer. Uh, the cover can be taken out very easily, but the rest still needs to be uh, screwed, um, screwed out. All right, so um, that would be our donor SSD. And here we see our eight gigabytes of RAM that we will transfer to the plastic MacBook. And here we have it, 240 gigabytes that we are going to put in 6.1 MacBook. The RAM can be tricky to get out if you have fat fingers like I do. So there are these two things that you need to slide out and then uh, you can take one, one uh, RAM slot and then you need to do the same with the one under it. And as you can see, um, I struggle a bit because of of my hands but overall it's, it's pretty much doable and you you will not break anything so don't worry now we're going to take out the same things from the 6.1 macbook this hard drive can serve as a great paperweight in 2023 and now we need to get out the ram So now finally we can put things from the aluminium MacBook into our 6.1 plastic one. So finally, we can see whether our 6.1 patient survived the operation by trying to boot it. And it should soon boot to El Capitan, which was the operating system that was running on the MacBook 5.1, the aluminum MacBook that we used as a donor for this one. It can take a while to boot because this MacBook should also recognize the hard drive, which came from a different one. But finally, it boots up. So now we're in. We can try to log in with our user here. <laughs> well, with my user, of course. And see if it works. Perfect. We are running El Capitan on MacBook 6.1 Intel Core 2 Duo in 2023. What's interesting is that we can still install a better operating system, High Sierra, on it instead of El Capitan. Before we do though, let's just quickly check in the system settings whether it has detected everything we put into it. So here you can see OS X El Capitan and you can see our 8 gigabytes of RAM that we just put in. 
I hope it's visible on the screen. And let's check the hard drive. So if we go to the system report and navigate to SATA, we can see that we have our hard drive. Trim is enabled, which is necessity for SSD. Let's go to High Sierra. Installing High Sierra on this MacBook can be a little bit tricky because you cannot find it if you just search for it in the App Store. If you go to the App Store and search for High Sierra, you will not be able to download and install uh, uh, this operating system. Um, yeah, so this will not work for you. But what you can do is go to this URL. So just look at this video and remember this URL if you ever need it. Click on uh, go to the App Store and it will take you to this page uh, where you can download it and try to install it. So let's see how it works. And it works, indeed. Here we can proceed and try to install High Sierra uh, on Macintosh HD. And this video is sped up, of course, it will take a little bit longer in real time. Uh, but here it goes. And now we need to restart. After restart, successfully logging in. Yes, this is High Sierra. We go through our normal questions um, and we're back. We're back to the App Store. What's funny is even now in 2023, running High Sierra in this old MacBook, App Store works. You can download a lot of apps. Some of them will not work, but some of them still will work. So that's actually great to see that this old machine can somewhat be still viable in 2023. Other than that, um, let's just check uh, to see if it's actually High Sierra. Uh, if you guys think I lied to you, so we go into the about this Mac and here we go. It is High Sierra, mission accomplished. You might be wondering what to do with this old MacBook in 2023. Well, you can connect an iPod to it if you have um, an iPod. Uh, I still have some. Uh, I love to collect an old, old things, uh, old electronics. So we can try and initialize this, uh, this old iPod and see whether it will sync and if we can upload some music onto it. And of course, iPods would think with the newer MacBooks and new Apple products, uh, but there would be no iTunes. So here we can see that it recognized the iPod. Uh, we can proceed with the iTunes setup and restore the iPod. And then it will be synced with this MacBook. We can put music onto it and we can um, upload um, music onto I our iPod, uh, which is a nice and fun thing to do to pretend you're in 2009. And this is how the interface looks. So this is our, well, new, new old iPod and the Mac OS, yeah, it allows us to sync it, to upload our music or videos or TV programs, if you can find them, um, to the iPod. So you might wonder, despite security updates not being available, what can I use this computer in 2023? Surprisingly, for a lot of things, web pages work. Uh, some of them will be slow, but most of them work fine, absolutely fine. And you can install modern browsers here as well, as well as office, uh, office applications. Apple has iWork package, which consists of the word processors, spreadsheet processor like Excel, which is called Sheets, and Keynote for presentations. And those still work fine. Uh, so if you have the machine like this and sometimes you are just in the vibe to sit with an old computer and pretend that it's 2009 next to your iPod and write a blog or write an article or write something for your work perhaps, it's, it's still a great and very enjoyable uh, laptop to do it on. The multi-touch touchpad is still here. Um, the keyboard, 
is still great. The screen is not that bad, of course. It's not retina, of course. It's not high DPI, but uh, I'm pretty sure after five minutes you would not notice this. Um, and what's nice about Apple to some extent, despite the whole plant obsolescence thing, that this machine, although very capable, does not support any more updates, is that certain things still work. So if you go to iTunes and um, you try to go to the store, despite iTunes not being available on the newer Mac OS, the store on this one still works. Uh, so if you go to the store and you can see that you can still buy uh, records, you can still get Ed Sheeran. I'm not sure how many people would do it. Obviously, probably you don't want to do it anymore since streaming is everywhere and um, buying electronic music in 2023 is a bit silly. Better to buy some vinyls, uh, but it's still there and it's still supported, which is, well, uh, to some extent, kudos to uh, Apple for still doing that. I might make another video exploring the old applications and how they still work in 2023, or perhaps um, to browse some of the apps that are no longer available on Mac OS. Um, but that would probably be in the some of the next videos. So for now, thank you very much, guys, and I hope you enjoyed this video.